Hi folks, Doyle Dykes here. Welcome to my Sunday string along and I'll be stringing along today on this beautiful Palm Sunday, by the way, the beginning of Holy Week, very special time. Uh, I'll be t uh, picking a little bit on this uh, Telecaster guitar here and hang in there with me folks because this is going to be a little bit different. I'll be doing a song here starting out with uh, Leonard Skinner. young sit beside me my only son listen carefully to what I say if you do this it'll help you some sunny day Take your time, don't live too fast. Troubles will come, but they will pass. You'll find a woman, yeah, you'll find love. And don't forget, son, there's a God up above, yeah, and be a simple. rich man's gold all that you need son is in your soul and you can do this oh baby if you try all that I want for you my son is to be satisfied be a simple something you love and understand be a simple kind of man if you do this for me son if you can you worry you'll find yourself follow your heart and nothing else and you can do this son if you try all that I want for you my son is to be satisfied and be a simple simple kind of man won't you do this for me if you can won't you do this
I just thought I'd do it, throw a little different ending on there. Uh, you know, that's not the kind of song I normally sing, and uh, but man, it makes me feel like a, a little bit like a rock star today. <laughs> uh, that's one of my favorite songs that Ronnie Van Zant had, uh, ever wrote. I, I mean, it, you know, it came from the heart. One of the songs, or one of the lyrics I was going to change, uh, Boy, Don't You Worry, You'll Find Yourself. Just follow Jesus and, and nothing else. <laughs> but he said, follow your heart. So follow your heart. And uh, and so I want to talk about some things today. But before I do, I'd like to uh, change guitars here. And uh, I think I'll just do something on this one right here. The beautiful Olsen guitar. Thank you, James. What a wonderful guitar. And... Uh,
Thrones and kingdoms shall all pass away, say, but there's something about that is king of kings and lord of lords you know the end of his government though well, there shall be no end you know and so he uh he's lord of the universe hallelujah and we we worship him uh, especially during this week we remember his triumphal entry well, I, uh, I hate to keep uh, bringing this up, but I w really, we do uh, appreciate your subscribing and give us a good like and share with others. Ring the bell, whatever you can do to help us out there, folks, and, and leave a comment. And, uh, and I usually try to get to all my comments by the midweek, but uh, I, I read all of them, and I, and I certainly try my best to uh, respond to everything, but we appreciate your comments. And we also have uh, some things that we offer here from everything from string winders to when you're changing strings to uh, to polish kits for your guitar. Well, this stuff is really, really good. In fact, we order a lot more of this now. And, uh, and then we have other things. Let me open my little cabinet here. Uh, we have CDs and books and all this stuff. And you can also go on your favorite download store and uh and you can download any of these records this is a uh, eric johnson signed one of his records to me one time to a treasured friend and i thought boy that is very special and i call this treasures of the spirit and what a what a treasure we have in our friendship with the lord and i have that a water frame we have in jesus with tommy emmanuel is on that on this record here and has white rose for heidi song i wrote uh, the the song i or the album i put out during the pandemic is this one here full circle and uh, also this is a dvd you can get this off of our uh it's called live sessions and you can get this off of our website and we have a number of things and uh, if you still use St uh, dvds folks and then we have uh, a country fried picking which is one of my very favorites that i've ever done also, uh, Songs of Faith and Freedom, and, uh, and it's a little backwards there. It's not hard to turn my hand that way. Uh, maybe it's because I play the guitar like I don't know. Anyway, uh, then I have uh, strings it, uh, that we use, uh, nylon and also steel. A lot of you already know this, and a lot of you uh, continue to, to order these things, and we appreciate that, and it helps us out so much. And also uh, Shub Capos, and I have several of them in here, but I love Shub. I really do. They're great, and they're great folks. And uh, anyway, uh, Gary uh, Mobley and his wife came out a few months ago to a church where I was playing up in uh, Northern California. And it's beautiful up there in that area, not far out of Healdsburg. And uh, we have books. Is this a book I've written? We have the audio and the regular books. They have a DVD that comes with them, and it play, uh, has songs that have stories that are written after the songs, and then I play those songs, and I also wrote one called The, the Lights of, of Marfa. We have Caps, Guitar Pour. These are really going over great. And uh, also Sunday String Along Caps which I really like these. And uh, well, then we have uh, mugs, and now we're ordering more of these mugs and because they're going over great. We appreciate your support. This has been a blessing to us. Fast Fret, we have other products, and we're getting so a few other things that we're adding in the next few days. And we have picks from Fred Kelly that I've, like I've used for, for since the 80s. And so... What a blessing. Uh, let me tell you, I can't tell you what a blessing Jim and Sue Olson have been 
I mean, there are some, I, I've met so many uh, great guitar builders in my life. In fact, there's one really close to where I live here, just a few miles away. Uh, Mr. Wallace, he builds Wallace guitars, and he can build anything. I mean, he can build a nylon string, a, a flat top. Uh, I was on the Opry one night, and a guy came up, and he had a Wallace guitar, and it was one of the most beautiful tele-type guitars I've ever seen. There's some talented folks out there, that, and they have a passion for it. And uh, <clears throat> Kirk Sand is another one, and also uh, uh, Randy Hughes and his son Bill guitars now up, up in Asheville, North Carolina. And this guitar here, though, is a treasure as well. And Sue Olson is a wonderful artist, and uh, she has paintings, and you just go to their website too and check out Olson Guitars. I'll be doing something for Mr. Olson here pretty soon. So I'm so excited. I have another Olsen that he made for me with the white rose on it. You can see that. It's a beautiful guitar. And so I uh, appreciate him. And he's a, a believer and loves the Lord with all of his heart. The passion of Christ. <clears throat> we talked about passion a few weeks ago. And uh, in fact, Tim Tebow, uh, I did a program with him not long ago. Uh, for Challenge Golf. It's a, a ministry where they actually use golf as a, a, a ministry in towns where a lot of guys couldn't go to like an honors course and they'll have a, a free golf weekend and invite some, someone like Tim Tebow or other uh, prof professional golfers and then they'll give their testimony. And uh, But he was talking about <clears throat> the passion of Christ and uh, the passion that we have for Christ. And he, you know, he was talking about, uh, does the passion that I have had for sports equal my passion for souls? He said, uh, one day I hope people will, will say about Tim Tebow that he had a passion for souls more than anything else in his life. He said, I've probably done more, spent more hours working for, to get to the next level in my sports career than I ever did uh, as far as uh, ministering to people and trying to be a witness, even though we know, I don't know that that's true. But he strives, he says, every day to be a witness and a soul winner for the Lord. Let me ask you, and I've asked you this before, how many people will go to heaven because of you? How many people may be in heaven because of you? This is a wonderful time to invite people to church. A lot of people say, well, you are my church. Well, this was never intended for that, I'll be honest with you. And I, as much as I appreciate that, and I hope this is a blessing to you, but to, to uh, have fellowship with other people, uh, and it's a scriptural thing too, you know, not to neglect uh, the, uh, the uh, fellowship with other saints. And so uh, I appreciate that. You know, and uh, I, one of my friends came out the other day and he said, you know, he heard some, it was Luke, I believe, over in North Carolina beforehand. And he said, Dole, I heard a preacher say, well, you know, you can be married uh, uh, and, and also, but never go home and see your wife. And, uh, but it doesn't mean you're not married. And uh, so <laughs> that's, that's a different type of uh, illustration. But, uh, but uh, if you love the Lord with all your heart, you know, spend as much time in, uh, with the body of Christ as well. And, uh, you know, very, very few Sundays do I ever miss not ministering somewhere else. And when I do, a lot, you know, a big part of the time I go to my friend Leo Matheny's Sunday school class. On Sunday, Leo's 91 years old. And he said something to me last week about this Passion Week and the Holy Week. And he said, you know, <clears throat> the same people that laid out their garments for Jesus in front of him uh, when he came in his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And he said, but where were they on Thursday? Where was everybody? Uh, uh, many of the same people that praised him and said, Hosanna, which means save now, save now, Hosanna. Um, and praised him were uh, some of those same people were the ones that said crucify him. You know, that this was a, a particular week where uh, Jesus, of course, he always knew who he was, where he was going, and what he was going to do when he got there. Again, he always knew who he was, where he was going, and what he was going to do when he got there. He was 
brilliant. He was one of the most, uh, you know, Chuck, I heard Chuck Swindoll preaching about him one time. He said, I've done a lifetime of study and of studying the life of Christ. And he says, if he said, if I could have a, a word, fantastic, but then they're sensational and, and, uh, and, but, and also unpredictable, unpredictable. And Jesus was brilliant. But yet he lived his life and uh, was able to really reach the common man. That's why I sung this song, uh, A Simple Man, uh, by, by Ronnie Van Zant, because Ronnie had that ability to be able to reach people that were, you know, just common everyday people, more than probably hardly of a whole lot of other rock stars. And, uh, you know, was he sophisticated? He probably didn't know it, but he was. He was a brilliant writer, but he wrote for the, he said, I write for the common man. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But as I look here uh, in my, let's say a prayer. Father God, thank you for this string along today. I pray that you will bless it. Bless this message right now. Bless your word and bless those that hear it. We give you thanks and praise for the outcome already in Jesus name. Amen. And if you, if I'm, I'm now I'm in the message Bible here, uh, just to show you, uh, how Jesus, you know, and, uh, one of his personal visits that he, uh, that he had, let me see if I can find this. Uh, let's see, uh, here it is. Go back a little bit in Luke. This didn't ha doesn't have anything really to do with uh, with the triumphal entry, but one day as Jesus was teaching, Pharisees and religious uh, religion teachers were sitting around. They had come from nearly every village in Galilee and Judea, even as far away as Jerusalem to be there. The healing power of God was on him. Some men arrived carrying a paraplegic on a stretcher. And they were looking for a way to get into the house and set him before Jesus. Jesus was in the house. And can you imagine all of a sudden there's dust coming down from what in the world is going on up there, you know? And then they, they were looking for a way to get him in the house, set him before Jesus. When they couldn't find a way in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof, removed some tiles, and let him down in the middle of everyone right in front of Jesus. And, uh, and all the religious leaders as well. Impressed by their bold belief, Jesus said, friend, I forgive your sins. Whoa. Boy, when he said that, the religious scholars and Pharisees buzzing, who does he think he is? That's blasphemous talk. God and only God can forgive sins. Well, that's true. But it was God talking, wasn't it? Jesus knew exactly what they were thinking and said, why all this gossipy and whispering, gossipy whispering? I love that gossipy whispering. This is a message, of course, which is simpler. Which is simpler to say, I forgive your sins, or to say, get up and start walking? Well, just so it's clear that I am the Son of Man, authorized to do either or both, he now spoke directly to the paraplegic. Now he said, get up, take your bedroll, and go home. And without a moment's he hesitation, he did. And he, he, uh, he got up, uh, and in fact, he said uh, he took his blanket and left for home, giving glory to God all the way. And people rubbed their eyes, stunned, and they could only give glory to God. Awestruck, they said, we've never seen anything like that. And uh, there, you might have words like Chuck Swindoll trying to think of words. One wouldn't be de deja vu with Jesus. <laughs> he was so unpredictable. I mean, it might be Duvalier. I, I ain't never seen nothing like that before. <laughs> After this, he went out and saw a man uh, named Levi at his work collecting taxes. And Jesus said, come along with me. And he did. Walked away from everything. And then he went with him. Levi gave a large dinner at his home for Jesus. Everybody was there. Tax men, other disreputable characters, disreputable characters as guests at the dinner. And the Pharisees and their religion scholars came to the disciples greatly offended. What is he doing? Eating and drinking with misfits and sinners. Jesus heard about it and he spoke up. Who needs a doctor, the healthy or the sick? 
I'm here inviting outsiders, not insiders, an invitation to a changed life, changed inside out. They ask, and John's disciples are, are well known for keeping fasts and saying prayers, also the Pharisees, but you seem to spend most of your time at parties. That's what they said to Jesus. Why? And then Jesus said, when you're celebrating a wedding, you don't skimp on the cake and the wine. You feast. Later, you may exercise moderation. But this isn't the time as long as the bride and the groom are with you. Have a good time. When the groom is gone, the fasting can begin, but no one throws cold water on a, a friendly bonfire. This is the king. This is thy kingdom come, or this is kingdom come. And uh, this is the message in uh, Luke chapter 5. And uh, isn't that amazing? What a man Jesus was. And uh, it, when he told his disciples, he's, uh, oh, let's see, let's look in uh, Luke chapter 19 here. Well, let's go to 18. Let's go a little bit ahead of it. Jesus took the 12 off to the side. And he said, listen carefully. We're on our way up to Jerusalem. Everything written in the prophets about the Son of Man will take place. Jesus knew he only had, what, six days to live right there. And he said, and the guys didn't know it. He said he will be handed over to the Romans, jeered at, ridiculed, spit on, and after giving him the third degree, they will kill him. In three days, he will rise alive, but they didn't get it. Nobody could, they couldn't make neither head nor tails of what he was talking about. And when he came to the outskirts of Jericho, so they were, they were on their way to Jerusalem. When he came to the outskirts, uh, outskirts of Jericho, a blind man was sitting beside the road asking for handouts. You know, there are a lot of, I mean, I've heard that over, even now in Jerusalem, there are many, many uh, beggars, you know, and there's a kind of a protocol that you approach them. If you give them any time at all or look at them, that they think, hey, well, you're going to give them something, you know. And so Jesus was just passing by. A blind man was sitting beside the road asking for handouts. When he heard the rustle of the crowd, he asked, what's going on? And they told him, Jesus, the Nazarene, is going by. He yelled, Jesus, the son of David, mercy, have mercy on me. And those ahead of Jesus told the man to shut up. But he only yelled at the louder, Son of David, mercy, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped, and he ordered him to be brought over. Bring him over here. And when he had come uh, near, Jesus asked, What do you want from me? Now, here's a blind man. What do you want from me? I mean, what do you want from me? He was blind, you know, but Jesus wanted him to tell him. He's asking you, What do you want from him? What do you want from him? You know, uh, he knew that something was going on. The blind man, he said, what's going on here? He, could, he had a sixth sense. You ever notice that a lot of blind people have a sixth sense, it seems, you know, or, or their senses are so in tune. I was with uh, Lawrence Juber one time, a uh, great guitar player. He used to play for Paul McCartney. He's been on many, many TV shows. And, uh, I mean, he's a wonderful guy. And we did a, a tour uh, over in Europe together, and then we did a, a t we did some things in California, and we were around uh, with Skip's music up in Sacramento, and uh, we were throwing out strings. It was a Taylor Guitars event, and it was at Skip's had a big store, a lot of people there, uh, about a hundred, hundred fifty maybe, and uh, for a guitar clinic, that's pretty good. And so we had all these strings, and we were giving them away. I think mine that we we were both uh, GHS back then. I still am. And uh, so we started throwing out, I started throwing out strings. He didn't. And, uh, and I, I saw a guy doing, you know, this number like this. And I went, Phew. and it's almost like slow motion, like, you know. And I looked at Lawrence and he looked at me and we're going, oh my Lord, you know. And uh, it was a blind guy. He had no eyeballs in his socket. He was like the man in the Bible, blind from birth. And he was completely blind. No way he could have seen this. And so help me, he caught the strings. He caught the strings. So when I see this man here, and he said, what's going on? What is happening here? And they said, it's Jesus of Nazareth. 
And then suddenly he said, mercy, have mercy on me, Jesus, son of David. And when he called him for who he was, have mercy on me, Jesus, son of David. See, Jesus was going into, up into that time, Jesus said, don't tell anybody about these miracles now. Just keep it to yourself. But then he was opening up his ministry. He was coming in, about to enter Jerusalem as the king. Amen. The son of God as the son of David, the king of kings. Jesus stopped and ordered him to be brought over. When he came, he said, what do you want from me? He said, master, I want to see again. I love this. Master, I want to see again. And Jesus said, well, go ahead and see again. I love this message Bible. Go ahead and see again. Your faith has saved and healed you. Notice he said, saved and sins were forgiving. The healing was instant. He looked up seeing and then he followed Jesus all the way, glorifying God all the way from Jericho to Jerusalem. And everyone in the street joined in shouting praise to God. Now, when he got into Jerusalem, I mean, the, and when he was near to Bethany, and that's where Lazarus lived, and Martha and Mary, they were all there. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you something. Jesus was a common man. He was sort of an outlaw, you know? And so was Lazarus because the, the Pharisees, uh, the chief priests, they wanted him dead, you see, because that's what was drawing all these people and getting, uh, the, getting their eyes off of them onto Jesus, you know? And so people were sick of religion. They still are. They, they were sick of religion. And uh, I heard Skip Isaac say this one time, you know, people loved Jesus more than religion. They were sick and tired of the same old, same old. I mean, they had these three uh, feasts that they had to go to, Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Pentecost, and, uh, and the Passover the feast of the Passover, they had to enter Jerusalem. And they said at times, I mean, there were like two and a half million Jews that took that you know pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And here they were taking the same roads all the time, every year, seeing the same old Pharisees and everything. And these Pharisees would go to Jesus. You need to take control of your guys. And uh, in fact, he said, you know, they don't wash their hands. And, uh, uh, they're defiling the teachings of the elders. <laughs> they couldn't get anything on him. In fact, they said, well, you look at you. You, you don't uh, observe the Sabbath. What was he doing? He was healing people on the Sabbath. But the thing is that they didn't believe and didn't realize he was Lord of the Sabbath. He's the son of God. And so when they entered in, uh, you see, they wanted to kill Lazarus. They had a price on his head. I mean, and, and Jesus, they wanted these guys dead because all these people came out. They're going to see Jesus, the one that does the miracles, and they're going to see Lazarus, the one they'd heard had been raised from the dead. And here they all come with this crowd. And Jesus goes over to his disciples. He said, go to the next uh, little village over there, and there's going to be a colt. There's going to be a donkey and a colt tied and a colt next to it. He said, I want you to take the little colt and a donkey. One, one of the, in fact, one of the, the, the uh, gospels would say that both of them, they took both of them. Now this is actually recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it is said that out of 89 chapters in the New Testament gospels uh, or in 89, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, um, there, there are actually, uh, let's see, four, chap four chapters talk about the first three years of his life. 85 chapters talks about the 31 and a half years. And 29 out of 85 talk about the last week of Jesus' life, which is starting today. It's starting uh, on the Palm Sunday. So half of the entire book of John is dedicated to, uh, to the, the teaching of the, or the, talking about the triumphal entry of Christ, Palm Sunday. And so Jesus said, take this colt. And uh, another translation, it says to take the colt. I believe it's in, the, in John's translation. He said, I want you to take this colt that has never, he said, you'll find a colt that has never been tethered or that is tethered he's tied but he's never been ridden 
And he said, I want you to take the colt. And when they, uh, they'll they ask you, why are you untying the colt? And he said, to say the, the master has use or the Lord needs it. And so, you know, what does the Lord need? And he could have went poof and there's a donkey in front of him, you know, but he wanted to use them. He wants to use you. He wants to use me. Do you think he needs a guitar player? He doesn't need us. He doesn't need a guitar, but he wants a, a guitar player. He wants you to sing. He wants you to praise him. He wants to use you. He wanted, that's why, why did he ask Bartimaeus, the blind man, what do you want from me? Tell him, amen. And, uh, and so he does want things from us. He doesn't need it, but he wants it. And of course, they, they took the, uh, the cult to, uh, to Jesus. And then by that time, all the people threw their garments in front of him and then they threw branches of palms in front of him and they cried, Hosanna. Uh, the son to the son of David, and uh, which means save now. As they were looking over at the Pharisees, they were boiling. So you had th three different groups of people. You actually had the disciples, and then you had Jesus, the followers, the crowd that wanted to see him and Jesus and and uh, Lazarus rather, and uh, and like Mary and Martha uh, and Zacchaeus, uh, <laughs> and you had all these people that were following him. And then you also had the Pharisees and the chief priests, and they hated him. I mean, they just, uh, you know, take control. You see what they're doing over there? You need to handle that, you know. And Jesus said, if they don't praise me, the, the rocks will, will cry out. And uh, that would have been the first rock concert, I heard someone say, yeah, <laughs> in, in history. And so what a rock concert that would have been. And so this is all recorded in all four of the Gospels, which is pretty amazing. And when you talk about Jesus and, and what did he do on that particular week? Well, after he rode in on the donkey, and think about that. I mean, here's the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, riding in on a donkey. Well, they said uh, that back in the day, in that time, a king would ride into a village if, uh, or into a town a city, if he was uh, peacefully entering, he would ride on a donkey. But if he was uh, proclaiming war or if he was, or even uh, you know, having a victory over a battle, he would ride his war horse, which is, you know, his horse was so many hands as they measure a horse taller than everyone else's. And, uh, and here's Jesus riding on a donkey. You would have thought he was, well, he was riding on a horse. Uh, I heard uh, Greg Laurie say, well, he will be the next time he comes. He'll be riding on Air Horse One. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, God help us. And so anyway, uh, what did Jesus do, to, though, after that? Well, for one thing, he entered in. He wasn't just going to Jerusalem. He was going to the, to, to the temple. He was going to the He wanted to see what was happening in the temple. When he got there, he wept. And of course, he saw all the unbelievers, and he wept, and he started overturning the the tables. You remember that? And then he, after that, he went back to Bethany, and he he took the night off or whatever. But uh, during that time, I mean, he ministered to Zacchaeus, changed his life, changed Bar Bartimaeus's life, uh, and knowing he only had a few days to live, and he's teaching them some of the greatest teachings of Christ was after his triumphal entry in the book of John. From John 12 on, read that. I read one the other day. My peace I leave unto you. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. He was saying all this right before he went to the cross. Just hours before he went to the cross. As Leo said, where was everybody on Thursday? Everybody was there on, on Palm Sunday, but where were they on Thursday? Where will you be? You know, have you accepted Christ as Lord of your life? And let me get back to something uh, that I, I was talking about, Ronnie Van Zandt, I was talking about Jesus. Let me tell you, Jesus always had time for common people, common folks. And that's something that religious leaders did not have. You had, your, you had to earn your way. And in religion, you have to earn your way to God. Jesus said, it's already done. I've, I've already paid for it. That's what Christianity says. He has paid the price. And uh, going into the temple, if you, you were an outsider, if you were a Gentile, you couldn't even go in. 
And if you were, you could go so far. And if you were a, a Jew, uh, if you were a man you could, or a woman, you could only go so far and unless you were uh, in the higher echelon. And that's what people were just sick of. Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. He was there for the common man. Just make me a simple kind of man. I like that. I really do. And that's the way Jesus was. Though he was brilliant. Though he knew, I mean, the, uh, why did he use a donkey? The donkey was actually uh, telling who he was because it was for centuries it, in the book of Zechariah chapter 9, it was talking about he'll enter in on the colt, on the colt of a donkey. And can you imagine that? It wasn't just the donkey, but the colt of a donkey it had never been written or had never been ridden before. I don't know if you ever thought about that, but I mean, that could have been a rodeo in, in, the, uh, in Jerusalem. I don't know if they ever had rodeos back then, but it could have been one because donkeys are not typically, if they've never been broken in, you don't just get on one and start riding. Well, they did. And they put a garment on top and Jesus sat there and they put their garments in front of him and the most compliant of every person or every creature there was the donkey. If you really think about it, what a beautiful thing. You know, I've actually laid my hand on our and on little E and Pearl, our little dogs, and before them, Mushu and Jasmine. And there were times when they were real sick before they passed away. I would lay my hands on their head. Even last night, I laid my hand on my dog's head. I said, Lord, bless little Egypt. Just bless her. Bless little E. Give her a good night. Get bless her, Lord, and bless our whole family. And I just made contact. You may think that's silly, but she just always just stay so still as you can sense that she knows that something special i'm telling you animals can sense that that donkey sense he knew who jesus was no doubt about it jesus was uh was king of kings and lord of lords but he uh, knew how to reach the common man he knew how to reach people like me perhaps people like you you know, people that, that uh, you know, you can have a doctorate degree, you can spend all your life like Chuck Swindoll did. <clears throat> and he's one of my favorite speakers, don't get me wrong. But there's so many people that study and all they want to do is impress. One thing about Chuck, he has always, and also people, other people I've been, Skip Heisick and Greg Laurie uh, and uh, Rick Warren, some of my favorite preachers, and <clears throat> uh, Bishop Tim Hill, uh, these guys speak on the level where everybody in there can understand. Even a child can understand what they're saying. Jesus said, when you pray, don't pray with these big words. Just, be, just pray from your heart to the Lord. That's what he told us to do. He was that way. What a, what a wonderful God. What a wonderful Savior. He's a Savior for the common man. He's for everybody. It, you may be the most sophisticated person in town, but when, you, when you're touched by Christ, let me tell you, you get down to the dirt. He will humble you and humble your heart. Father God, let's pray. Father God, thank you for being a, a simple man in, in certain ways, yet you were so complex. You knew already that you were fulfilling scripture that had been spoken many, many, many centuries even before that you had your triumphal entry. Lord, you're all-knowing, and thank you, God, that you know us. You knew Bartimaeus. And Lord, I just thank you for what you did for him back then, and you took time, even though you had hours to live. You took time for him. You took time once again to go to Lazarus' house and Mary anointed your feet with her hair. You, you took time for Zacchaeus and going to his house and said, salvation has come to your house today. God, thank you that you're taking time for us today. Thank you, Lord, that you're taking time. Lord, and we, I receive you as Lord of my life. If it's anyone that hasn't done that, to say, Lord, I receive you as Lord of my life. Lord, just receive me where I am in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. Jesus, like Greg Laurie says, he always cleaned his fish after he caught them. So just receive Jesus as Lord of your life, and he'll receive you as your son, as his son and daughter. God bless you, folks. Thank you so much. I want to say one more thing about Ronnie. Ronnie said this. 
it, it, this is funny. I was I was looking at a uh, documentary a few days ago. Al Cooper, uh, who was their uh, uh, Leonard Skinner's uh, producer. I mean, he did you know Sweet Home Alabama and oh man, so many great songs that they did. And Al Cooper kind of discovered them, got them on a major label, and <clears throat> they played the song Simple Man. He said, that's not a good song for an album. We don't need that on here. And he said, it's not interesting. It's boring. And Ronnie just took him by the hand, took his arm, and he, and he just walked him in and said, come with me. Out of, walked him out of the studio, out of the control room, outside to his beautiful Bentley. And he said, get in, Al. And he got in his car. And I was kind of terrified of Ronnie, I'm telling you. And he took him there and... Uh, and he says, we'll call you when we're done cutting this song. You know, obviously his, this was about his mother, you know, and you don't tell a simple man, you can't write a song about your mama. <laughs> Ronnie took him out into his Bentley. And Ronnie says this, and I quote, I tend to write about places I've seen and things that I've done, normal things, things that you've done, really. It, I think of uh, if you write if you write it really simple, then you can reach more people and they'll understand what you're talking about. And so this Holy Week, once again, how many people will be in heaven because of you? Let's keep it simple. And let's tell people about Jesus. It's such a simple message. He, he came to this world. He died, he died for our sins. And if, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be safe. Thank you, Lord, for that. God bless you, folks. Thanks for joining me on my Sunday string along, and happy Palm Sunday.